Hello, YouTubers. I'm not an expert, and today we're going to talk about tenon saws. Actually, really dovetail saws. So I decided to teach myself about dovetailing, and I needed a saw. And dovetail saws are either very cheap or very expensive. There's not really a lot of in between. But out searching on the internet, I found a couple of different people, Paul Sellers and Rex Kruger, who talked about fixing up a cheaper saw like this and making a nice saw out of it. Now, I'm going to refer mostly to Rex's video because he did a really good how-to video. And he also provides a template for how to reshape the handle. And he started with this Spear & Jackson brass back tenon saw. You can get these on Amazon. The price goes up and down quite a bit. I've seen them for as little as $27. I've seen them for as much as $42. This one I purchased as an Amazon return, and it said that it was in used, acceptable condition. And when I got it, the only thing I can see wrong with it, I have not unboxed it, is this cardboard's a little bent. There is nothing wrong with this. It is, it's in excellent shape. So uh, a great place to start and to follow what Rex suggested. So let's take a look at the saw. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take it out of its packaging, take a good look at it. Okay, out of its packaging. So what do we have? We have a stiff brass back. It's quite thick. It's pretty beefy. It's got a nice saw plate. It's got teeth, you know, as you'd expect. And it has this big hunk of beech as a handle. Now, Rex, when he, he looked over this saw, he described the problems. And he said the first problem, obviously, is this handle. He called it crap. Um, kind of understated. What this handle is, is basically imagine a 1930s Disney cartoonist has uh, drawn a handle and someone used that as the pattern. It's weird. It doesn't feel good. Um, I don't have really huge hands and it's kind of too tight. <laughs> it's also, it's bulky, it's flat, it's just ugly. But Rex fixed all that and so did uh, Paul Sellers by simply taking some files, maybe a saw, and there's plenty of wood here. So you fixed it up. Now, what you do is you take these rivets out. There's three of them. They're not screws, they're rivets, but they're not really peened in there. They're just sort of friction fit. So I was able to pull them out with a small screwdriver and put them back. Not a problem. This is a brand new saw, but I've already done a saw. So I'll show you the results saw in a moment. So the other problem with the saw is that the teeth are not great. They have too much set and they're not sharpened quite normally. When I look at them up close, they appear to be cut like with a, sort of an isosceles triangle, like a crosscut saw, but they're sharpened 90 degrees across like a rip saw, which would make it a really non-aggressive rip saw or a really terrible crosscut saw. Um, it cuts okay, it works, but it doesn't make a really nice cut like you'd want for doing dovetail joints or, or other, you know, making, making other joints. So through the magic of, of having already done this, I have another saw. So I'll show you what my results look like real quick. So here's the saw, this is the longer one. Here it is after I've done the work. So I left most of the name on, the Spear and Jacks, and not all of it, I had to sand some off. And I cut... You can look at the handle. I'll put the handle behind it. You can see how much I cut off. Not a whole lot, but I reshaped it, and it is much more comfortable. Then I finished it with a little boiled linseed oil, and I'm very happy with the, with the new handle. Now, to do this cut, Rex Kruger on his website, rexkruger.com, he sells uh, patterns for various pieces of furniture and things that he's made, and they're very nice. He gives this pattern away. So he has a template that you can cut out, glue onto the wood, and it tells you where to cut the wood away, where to round it, and where to leave it. And you'll end up basically with what you see here. Then you can customize that to fit your hand. You know, if you need a little more width, you can make, you can take a little more out of the horns. If you want a little more curve, whatever you want to do. Anyway, it is a much nicer feeling saw. Now the next step is to fix the teeth uh, now, Rex says it's too much set. So you take two hammers, you put a hammer in your vise, and you take the other hammer and you just tap them down using that as an anvil. Make a few passes, flatten them out a little bit. 
I did that the first time and then just tried the saw without any more sharpening. And it came out pretty good. But I went ahead and did the sharpening, which seems a little intimidating. It was actually pretty easy. Sharpening, I used a Nicholson. You hear people badmouth the Nicholson files all the time, but it worked fine. I used a Nicholson double extra slim file, uh, six inch. Let me grab that real quick. So here's the file with a file handle. I got a Nicholson because I couldn't find any other brands easily purchased. And Nicholson, they actually recommend a four inch for 15 tooth per inch saw. But I don't think there's a real difference between a four inch and a six inch. The thing with the, the saw file, the flats need to be more than twice the height of your teeth so that you're not wearing out the full flat. You get to use both sides. And so a six inch is just going to be a little bit more than you need, but that's okay. That won't hurt anything. The important part is how wide is this edge? There are actually six cutting edges on these files. And this edge, which is only, I don't know, a 64th, less than a 64th, 128th of an inch wide, very narrow. That's the double extra slim. So if you can't find a double extra slim, get an extra slim, and I bet you it'll work just fine. Um, you'll be fine. You know, other people say, well, you have to have this, you have to have that. No, you don't. You don't have to. It'll work. It'll get you what you need to do. And so go right ahead and don't be intimidated by the sharpening process. It's not that bad, especially sharpening a rip saw, which are 90 degree teeth. So you're going 90 degrees to the blade. Look up the angles, follow the instructions, and don't be afraid. Remember, this is a very inexpensive saw. Okay. Now, to practice for that, I actually bought this saw, and I'll just show you this. This Husky saw I got at Home Depot back when they were only $10. They've gone way up. I started trying to sharpen it, but it's apparently made of aluminum foil, and the saw about sliced all the way through it. I mean, the file sliced almost all the way through it. I really don't recommend this saw. It did cut wood pretty good, but I don't think it's in it for the long run. Okay, so I went through and sharpened it, and I'm very happy with the results. I think they're pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my setup a little bit, and since I have one that I've followed Rex's instructions, it's the first saw I've ever really sharpened, and I got one that I haven't used yet, so I'm going to do a little comparison, and we're going to see how they cut. And a piece of, uh, I think I have a piece of red oak. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm all set up. So what I have is a piece of red oak. It's about half an inch thick. I've drawn a line on it across the top, and I have another line over here across the top. I'll move it a little bit. So I'm going to take my hot rotted one and cut first with it. Now, a lot of people talk about making the first couple inches a little less aggressive so it's easier to start. I have not done that. If you watch um, Renaissance Woodworker, he will describe to you how to properly get the saw started, which... You do by not leaving all the weight of the saw on the wood, but picking it up a little and then giving it a nice firm push. Okay, and that cut pretty good. Let's take a look, take it out, take a look at it. So you can see that made a pretty straight cut. I'm off of a little bit on my angle, but I think it's, I think it came out pretty good. So let me do with the new saw that I've never used before, this one. Let's see, am I on camera at all? Let's bend you over here a little bit, and I'll try to follow this line. Well, it definitely takes a lot more effort to cut. And let's take a look at that cut up close and personal in the camera. Where did the wood go? There we go. To learn where the where the lens is on my camera. So is that focused? I think it is. I don't have my glasses on. I can't tell. I can tell even without my glasses. That is a much rougher cut. Okay, so the, the real test is to cut the piece off and put it back on and see if the gap closes up. Didn't do that very neatly, but this was my my hand sharpened saw. Okay, and to be honest with you, well, I made a big mess there. If I put it back in, 
There's a little bit of pencil line down there, but that actually disappears pretty good. Can I get the bigger was? Yeah, I didn't cut the pencil line off, but that looks okay. Let's do the one from the unsharpened saw. And cut that one off a little better. And yeah, can you see that? Is it focusing? I can never tell what it's doing. Um, not as good. It's okay. You could probably live with it. But definitely, I think, kind of a neat project. It worked out really good. I'm very happy with the way it came out. And uh, a lot of fun. Or about $30-ish if you find the saw at a good price. They've gone up. Right now, they're about $42. But sometimes they come down. Another note on the, the nuts. I reused them. But you don't have to reuse them. Um, places like Tay Tools and some other places sell split nuts. Or something you can do is grab an old saw at a garage sale. Like this one. Pardon me while I reach around. And this saw has screws on it. Now, these I, probably, I paid like a dollar for this at a garage sale. It's not much of an old saw. But you can probably find one like this and steal the hardware off of it if you want to get rid of these sort of cheap sort of rivets that they use. Uh, much less expensive than buying fancy ones from the, the new from the store. Or you can go to the hardware store and look for some Chicago screws and I bet they'll work fine. Anyway, that's my, uh, that's my experience trying the hot rodding saw a la Rex Kruger and a few other people. Uh, a lot of fun. All right, we'll catch you later.